Hey everyone, welcome back to the RPG Games YouTube channel. My name is Ralph, this is Pathfinder Kingmaker. We have become king, yes. As of now, as a king, I can refer to myself as we. I'm not sure if I was doing that before. Maybe I was ambitious, I don't know, but um, yeah. King Grand Blackforge, sounds good. I'll be... Um, over there in the corner, on my throne, polishing my crown, if you need me. Meanwhile, uh, we're taking a look at the capital, Solistar, and there is a couple of... Like, I rebuilt it uh, a whole bunch of episodes ago, and there is a, a couple of buildings that can still be upgraded. Let me quickly take a look around the barracks, probably. Yes, barracks can be upgraded to a garrison. Uh, let's see, the in the longhouse can be upgraded to a town hall. Town hall. Arene Magicals Rarity Shop. Okay, that becomes a workshop. That is good. I guess we can upgrade the shrine to a temple. Look at that. Very nice. The herbalist house will become an alchemist laboratory. And I think that's about it so far. Uh, let's see. What is this? Oh yeah, the alchemist laboratory. Yes, I think that's about it for Solistar. Let's uh, quickly take a look if we can do the same in one of the different regions. Uh, we should be able to turn Solistar into a city quite soon. I think we can uh, grab Glenabon as a new area, which means that there will be a new area added to our kingdom. We are going to pass one day though because the bald hilltop gang is uh, rearing its head again so we need to make sure that Lindsay uh, succeeds here let's uh, skip one day okay, so the um, the kingdom managed to persevere and enjoys peace once again plus four relations uh, plus one arcane, plus one stability, and three BP. That's very good. That is very good. Uh, can Lindsay do something else? Maybe in one of these. Uh, the region I don't think she can claim. Oh, actually, Ragongar and Harem are available. Okay. Um, in that case, we might we might be able to do something else. Let's see. Lost Dwarven knowledge. That's forty-five days. Do, do I want to lose my general for forty-five days? I, I'd much rather have the storyteller do that. Actually. Let's see, training, economy, I don't think we need, although, could be that there is something Lindsay can do, maybe. Restoration of the Silver Shield Fortress, that's 30 days. Enhanced border control. Yeah, there we go. That's something that Lindsay could do. Uh, what does it give us? Relations plus 10. That's quite nice. Strategic partnership is something Lindsay could do. The enhanced trade as well. Wow, that's expensive. Trading with rest stuff as well. So I think I want to start with uh, the enhanced border control. 
relations plus 10 that's a really nice bonus let's throw Lindsay on that one ranking up so we could claim Glenaban but I like there is some events going on now which are giving us negative modifiers like uh, Lingxia, there is another one here, the Order of the Prism. So let's first see what they want from us in the throne room. It's an invisible... okay. Tristian suddenly appears. Ah, he's a diver, he can do that. Grand Blackforge, a situation has developed. We must decide if we shall follow the letter of the law or do what my heart tells me is right. Oh boy. Travelers, merchant vessels roam the rivers of the stolen lands. They sell low-priced goods and bypass the official fees. They sell nothing special, of course. Cheap clothes, utensils, simple tools. These are lifesavers for our peasants who can afford little else. However, the merchants are unhappy with the current situation. They wish to fund a boat squad to hunt down and sink the travelers' boats. Merchants are allegedly enforcing the laws and fighting against the sales of stolen property, but in fact they're only greedy uh, to control the small percentage of goods that the travelers live on. It's up to you to decide what we should do. I'm sure you can see why this troubles me. We must interfere and prevent this injustice. Let the merchants know that their efforts are not required. If they touch any vessels that isn't theirs, we will have to resort to force. Thank you, Grand Blackforge. The law doesn't always grant protection to those in need. Uh, plus one community, plus two loyalty, and we have some new events, okay. And let's see what the general wants. Regongar. Grand Blackforge, here's the thing. Ah, he's always... <laughs> Straight to the point, this uh, Regungar fellow. We whipped Numeria into line and made a good show of it, but we lost a lot of soldiers along the way. Our good neighbors must all be imagining how they'll divide our territories between them. And that's what I'd be doing in their position. We have to renew our ranks before it's too late. You could call up the local citizens, however, all the volunteers are already all uh, either already recruited or six feet underground. That means we either take in the weaklings or we do it by force. We'll train them to kill and then one fine morning they'll take a blade in the heart. Not a bright future, eh? It's best to pay mercenaries. That bunch of daredevils is dreaming of fighting for a war chief like you. These guys are tough and dangerous men, not some untrained farmhands. My subjects have spilled enough blood. We have plenty of gold to hire mercenaries. Strike a bargain with the mercenaries? I'd have joined them if I hadn't become your general. Loads of weapons, pockets full of gold and no trace of remorse. That's my kind of party. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, military plus 10, that's very good. Am I ignoring the economy minus 5? Varask! More gifts, thank you very much. A fly swatter, well that's gonna be handy. I'm wondering what kind of weapon that is. Okay, so let me quickly take a look. Do we need to go to the bald hilltop and fight some monsters there? Because I've forgotten to do that in the past and that wasn't very good of me. Uh, where is the ancient curse? Ancient curse part 4. A new attack has begun, we need to get to Bald Hilltop right away and defeat whatever enemies we find there. Yeah, you see? So, we have to get over there. 
Uh, who do I need? I need Jaytal and I need Valerie. Because we're going to do their uh, companion quests in this episode. Soon after returning to the city, you realize Valerie is not at her usual post. Asking a series of servants and guards, you find your way to the city tavern, where you find the girl with a glass of wine. Do you need something? Look at me sitting there all cozy at the bar, with my crown, well polished. Can I join ya? Valerie scoots over, giving you some space. You can take an empty stool and order a drink. For a few minutes, there is a tense silence between you. The girl slowly sips her drink. I'll uh, drink my beer silently. Since you and I met, Fredero, I've started coming here more often. I don't care, but... <sighs> I don't care, but I'm getting tired of all the extra attention that's being so generously shoveled at me. Let's keep quiet. When she's talking, let her talk. Forgive me. Don't worry. You're not my nanny. I'll take care of my own problems. Yeah, you've been very successful at that so far, uh, Valerie. Sorry to say, but... Hell Knights are not the most courteous guests, are they? The Hell Knights from the Order of the Wreck are the vilest of them all. A tan-skinned half-elf with green eyes looks at you respectfully, but with a smile on his face. My name is Darwin. Darwin, the rebellious murderer Lingxia is searching for. Yes, I'm a rebel, a murderer, a pirate, a renegade, a smuggler. I have a lot of other scary titles. Whoa, well that's an accomplishment. If you listen to Lingxia, I'm evil incarnate, baby eater, your worst nightmare came true. And if the end of time should ever come, it will be because of me and me alone. I think Harem is gonna disagree with that, Darwin. I think Grotus is gonna take care of the end of times. Of course, all of Lingxia's accusations are false, that is to say, they are not entirely true. It's true I'm involved in this story, but my sins are not so great as they are thought to be. Tell me your story. It's so long I don't even know where to begin, although I guess you're only interested in the things I've been accused of. I did in fact kill a Chalish noble, and I participated in a rebellion, but all of this happened by total accident. I was captain of a ship that sailed the inner sea. We traded with those who were stronger than us and raided those who were weaker. Just regular life for a man of my profession. One day we stopped at one of the Kaliax ports and well that's where it all started. I caught sight of a certain Chalish noble who for a long time been number one on my kill on sight list. So I challenged him to a duel and he was too stupid to refuse. I dispatched him, only then to learn that he was a distant relative of Shaliax's crown prince, and besides that, the lord of the surrounding lands, and of course no one in the area was at all fond of him. After his death, a rebellion broke out, it's nothing new for Kaliax. As his accidental killer, I was named the rebellion's leader, but I assure you I fled the first moment I could leapt upon my ship and set sail. A month later I found out I'd become the main reason for a great tragedy and an enemy of the Chalish people. So what did this Chalish noble do to make you so angry? Once long ago, long before all this rebellion nonsense, I used to be a simple sailor who served the Taldorian merchant fleet, good old times. The blazing sun overhead, a salty taste on the lips, the squawk of seagulls calling you forwards, ropes creaking in the storm, creaking or squeaking, you know, they make all sorts of noises, these ropes, as you fight against the sea itself, winning in the end, and of course the line of the land on the horizon, when you know that tonight you'll have a mug of rum in one hand and a smiling girl to share it with. Ah, life. 
But all that came to an end when once a certain Shailish noble decided that he liked our goods but didn't like our fleet. I survived the battle barely. Clinging to a piece of driftwood lost on the open sea like me, I swore I'd have my revenge. So I decided to become a pirate myself, a pirate captain as need be. Can't always get what you want, you know, unless you're me. What do you want from me, Darwin? I'm glad you ask. I have so much to offer. You see, I'm rich, and I don't mind sharing my riches with those who can help me with my troubles. Lingxia, on the other hand, will give you nothing. I doubt she'd even say thank you. I know where Lingxia has set up her temporary camp and a secluded lodge on the edge of the southern Nurdle Marches. Go there, convince her to stop chasing me. Order her, kill her if needed, it shouldn't be difficult. What do you say? Do we have a deal? You figured you'll buy me? Why not? Everything and everyone has a price, it's just a matter of negotiation. I have no wish to fight with Lingxia. Perhaps you'll manage to convince her to leave peacefully, though I won't count on that. Uh, well, I'm not gonna take sides on this one. I won't take sides, neither yours nor hers. You can figure this out amongst yourselves. A pity, such a pity. Still, if I were you, I would go talk to Lingxia. She'll never get me, but her zeal to continue causing trouble for your subjects. Farewell. Uh, okay, so I need to talk to Lingxia at some point. I was <laughs> trying to get out of the city. Yes, so Bald Hilltop is first. Let's head over there. Good thing that's quite close. What kind of monsters are we gonna face this Hoping time? Hoping I fight back! Best kind of fight! Okay, those are not too bad. That's also doable, I guess. That's nice, this dazzling display is uh, kicking in. I think both uh, Ekundai and Valerie have that now, this uh, dreadful carnage uh, feat. Okay, well that's one portal closed. <laughs> what kind of... <laughs> what kind of a noise was that? Alright, let's skin everybody as we always do. Ow! Oh, poor uh, Knock Knock is uh, still getting hurt. Okay, so now we have to pick a direction. Uh, let's see, the Southern Barons, that is a companion quest with Kaliki. We have the Valley of the Dead, this is where we need to go for. Uh, let's see... Uh, for Jaytal. And then of course for Valerie we need to go to completely different direction, being... Let's see... Where was that? Temple of Shalen? Yes. So let's uh, do this first. Here we are at the Temple of Shaolin. That looks like a really cool building. One of the nicest buildings that I've seen so far in the game. And they put a red carpet for their king, you know? At least they know how to flatter me. That's a good start. There is a priest who's... Uh... Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, that's lovely. This... Um... Yeah, how should we call it? Mosaic? 
of uh, Shailen's symbol. Fredero, that one we know. My respects, your highness. Uh, there is Hagen. Don't take your time. Priest Larian is ready to begin the ritual. Ah, okay. Here is the High Priest of Shalen. And of course I run at him with my scimitar drawn. <laughs> yeah, don't be threatened. Just a little old dwarf with a scimitar plus two and a crown. Do you see the crown, High Priest? Look who's there, King Grand Blackforge. My respects and I see you have brought company. Finally, for a woman balancing on the edge of excommunication, you are sluggish, Valerie. Valerie slowly turns her head towards the paladin and gives him an icy look. Never in a hurry to meet those who would seek petty revenge upon the innocent for another's alleged transgressions. That's a lot of expensive words, Valerie. Are you sure that this paladin is going to understand you? And this, how dare you drag this abomination into the temple of the goddess. <laughs> oh yeah, we brought Knock Knock. <laughs> I'm sure he's grabbing all the gold, all the chandeliers and everything that he can find. <laughs> Stuffing it all in his backpack. <laughs> yes, stink is awful. What are those flowers? Ew. Please, everyone be calm. Let's not hurry in with accusations and hasty decisions. In the end, we're in a sacred place. Our arguments under this faulting are unacceptable. What yeah. My name is Larian. I'm a priest of Shailen and leader of the local congregation. For now, at least, until my place is taken by a permanent priest from the Order of Prisms. For now, I am spiritual advisor and mentor to the respected Hagen and his people. Paladins of Shalen who require the advice of more experienced devotees. What is this place? The Temple of the Lenses is a new abbey for one of the orders of Shalen. A beautiful architectural masterpiece, isn't it? Such a sophisticated building will make a splendid home for the Order of Prisons. Uh, yeah, you've, you've really outdone yourself with this building and, and so did the designers actually. This, this looks really cool. I see there's a whole company here. My respects, King, I came at the special invitation of Sir Hagen. How could I refuse a paladin of my beloved patron? My respects to you, and you, Valerie. Federer's Senate nods to you and looks at Valerie. Seeing the scar, he purses his lips and shakes his head sorrowfully. I heard about what happened to you. You see... Uh, but seeing it with my own eyes is unbearable. Believe me, I never wanted this. To be honest, I don't even remember striking the blow. We settled our argument in battle, Fredero. As for the scar, I've been wearing my wounds for a long time. Uh, well, that's very cool of Valerie not to uh, resent Fredero for this. I don't have the slightest desire to meddle in the affairs of Shailen and her followers. I demand only one thing. Stop slandering me and my subjects. As long as Valerie is in your lands, no creator who crosses into your borders can feel safe. We heard how much she despises everyone who is capable of creating anything beautiful, and we're not going to keep silent about it. Of course, she could repent for her transgressions voluntarily and beg the goddess for mercy. I tried to forget everything they stuck into my head in the order, but I remember one thing for certain. Shailen is not revengeful or stern. I don't believe your words, Paladin. You're right, Valerie, our goddess is not stern with those who misstep, which is why you need not fear the divine trial. Its name is just an old tradition. Valerie looks down and an expression that could be taken for abashment freezes on her face. 
What trial are you talking about? A divine trial is a special ritual carried out by the followers of a god for someone who has lapsed in their fate. It is not well known, but is used on those for whom there is still hope for returning to the church, or at least for making peace. Making peace indeed, Valerie, who rejected my lady, should not count on being coddled. What exactly is Valerie accused of? Of persistent disrespect and insolence toward Shalen's order. <laughs> And the goddess herself, the order of the eternal rose, disowned this woman, but we, we, the order of prisms, will finish what was started. Valerie refuses to repent, she shall suffer punishment. Oh, this is gonna be a fight. If Shaylin's newest order appears each time another one stops persecuting me, my disrespect for your goddess will only grow. You are creating the very thing that you so diligently fight, but are incapable of understanding this. It's up to you, Valerie. Valerie keeps silent for a few moments, then takes a deep breath. Very well, I will endure this trial if it helps to put an end to all of this. Thank you for agreeing, Valerie. Let's begin. Let's get ready to ritual. Shaylin's divine trial has commenced. May she be merciful to the lost and confused. It is time to listen to all sides and decide what fate awaits Valerie. Today, under the vaulting of the Temple of Prisms, we, followers of the Goddess, will give you, Valerie, a chance to redeem yourself in the eyes of Shaylin and... Enough, Larian. Everybody present knows she doesn't deserve redemption. She lost the right to forgiveness on the day she rejected Shaylin's grace. Oh, this is really a heartliner, this Hagen. I didn't come here to stand silent like an idol. When I challenged Valerie to a duel, she agreed. We fought according to all rules, and her argument was settled. Think what you will of Valerie, but at least she showed me some respect. I never wanted to insult anyone. All I wanted, all I dreamed of was to choose my own way. Ah uh, yeah, this should work, I guess. Everyone can choose their own path. You and Frederick follow Shaylin's fate, and Valerie is turned away from it. Doesn't mean you can interfere in her life. This may surprise you, but I agree with you. Once my blood cooled, I started to realize that my complaints about Valerie were a little... excessive. Oh well. Enough about Fredero, we don't have that much time and Valerie gives us much to consider. According to her masters at the Order of the Eternal Rose, she's always been noble and merciful. Stories about the valor she showed in Bravoy spread far beyond its borders. How many did this fearless warrior save from the fire at Chamandi Eldori's house? They and many others owed their lives to her. Oh, that's really cool, because this happened like in the introduction of the of the game, basically. So that choice now comes back. That's really cool, actually. I only did what I had to, no more, no less. Yeah, I don't want to say this actually, so I'll keep quiet. So much smugness in her words, so much pride. Valerie closes her eyes in irritation and swallows heavily. You feel she's about to scream. Enough, I'm tired of this endless babble. I shall prove that Valerie is a capricious and dishonorable woman who has twisted her life to pursue a single goal, to harm everything that is precious to Shaylin. Jesus, dude. I have a reliable witness who can confirm my status, uh, my statement. I present Sir Evil. This lady insulted me in front of my audience for no reason at all, arrested me with brutal force. And the worst part is, when it does settle and my blood cooled, 
Valerie didn't even think to apologize for her behavior. I'd say that only confirms her maliciousness. And this one we really need to uh, work. You provoked her. It's your fault, Evil. Ah, damn it. Impertinent. Art is meant to arouse minds, not beget violence. Let's keep quiet. Thank you, Avolt. I hope this statement about Valerie's unconscionable act will not be enough. I'm tired of this useless babbling. You stand here and discuss me as if I'm some one of your stupid pictures or stone idols, judging, accusing, speaking for me as if I don't exist. You can all go to the abyss with your Shalen. <laughs> well, that's gonna go over well. <laughs> you gave them heat, friend. Serves them right. Couldn't have put it better. Insulting the goddess in her own temple. Death to Valerie. Oh, shit. That's probably not going over well. I can die, oh, how about you shoot this I guy right here? Yeah. Yep, they're all running now. Yeah, this dazzling display stuff is going really well. This is it, finally! It's a waste of time, I've had enough, not a single concession, not a single word about Shaylin. Let them pray to their goddess on their bellies, if she's so precious to them. Let's go, this place makes me want to scrub clean. Wow. Okay. Well, we certainly didn't make uh, <laughs> a lot of friends here. Uh, so as I, I mentioned in a previous episode, I I had to um, revert back to an older save. Now I've played this part before and we actually uh, succeeded in that uh, one diplomacy uh, check at the end there. And what happens then is that uh, Valerie, uh, her, Valerie's scar is removed, so she gets a like a sign from Shaylin and her scar is removed. So... That's another option that can happen, but uh, this time it didn't. Is there a... While we're here... <laughs> is there stuff that we can grab? On our way out? Ooh, there is more here. Oh damn, I've never even seen this building. Nice. Oh yeah, there is loot. There is loot alright. Well... I mean, if we're not making friends, then we might as well just grab everything. Curious to see if that's gonna come and bite us in the ass at some later point. Okay, so we are gonna return to the capital now. And then let's see if we can maybe pick up Kaliki and then head to the other side and uh, do two more quests, companion quests. Okay, so we're back in the capital. We are at um, the house of Kaliki and Kanra. And uh, for this companion quest, I need to take Kaliki. So I'm gonna see if I can talk her into switching. Of course, you recognize me, but I am Kanra. 
I'd like to ask you a few questions about your past. That's reasonable, who wouldn't want to know about their subjects and companions? Tell me the story of you and your sister from the beginning. The beginning of this story is quite unexciting. My sister and I were born in Kadira, a place most unsuitable for tieflings. The people there honor the radiant Saren Ray. Think of themselves as guardians of the good. Of course, no one threw us in a dungeon right away or tried to kill us for no reason, but we could not forget about social status. It's impossible to rise from rags in that country, where they value connections and reputations more than gold. Since birth, they looked on us as evil creatures, vicious and unpredictable. Not that it's entirely false, but what is true, generally speaking, I've always known what I was worth and what lot I deserved. If superstitions stand in the way of achieving a goal, that's no reason to shed a tear. Better to use those same superstitions to our own ends. I must say, in Kadira, they idolize Asimars almost as passionately as they hate tieflings. So I thought that with a little effort I could pass as one and my mastery of fire could be mistaken as a sign of Saren Ray's goodwill. Of course, a masquerade of that sophistication required a little outside help and I found it. I made a contract with a resourceful devil who calls himself the Forefather. He wove an illusion over me and my sister, hiding our tiefling features from everyone. I hope this doesn't shock you, it's not what I wanted to bind myself to a powerful and devious creature. What choice did I have? To wash bowls at a caravan sarai? Until the end of my days? That wouldn't just be a waste of the priceless gem that I am. <laughs> I'd be burdened with caring for a Kaliki, the naive walking virtue who is totally unfit for a hard life. What was the agreement you made with the devil? I'd have to spend the whole evening telling you all the details. Contracts require thoughtfulness and accuracy, especially ones like this. But to put it simply, I was to do as he commanded, and in return he granted me a powerful illusion, which would make my sister and I indistinguishable from Emberkin, descendants of Perry. Okay, Perrys are a race of Celestials native to the good aligned outer planes. Okay. The contract included a number of caveats and limitations, in particular the tasks that Devil would give me could do me no harm. The contract didn't involve my soul, on the contrary, it bound me until my death, but no longer. What assignments did the Devil give you? You'd be amazed, they included fighting evil. The forefather comes from a line of apostate devils of Dama Vigas. They live for one goal only, to turn people's soul away from serving any god but Asmodeus. Our Dama Viga made a nest for himself in Kadira long ago, finding special pleasure in enslaving the servants of Saren Ray. Nothing helps to turn souls away from a fate better than fanatics of the fate. You have no idea, Grand Blackforge, how often a zealous servant of the good in their struggle against evil has pushed others in the arms of that very same evil. That's why the Forefather sent me to serve the followers of the Cult of the Dawnflower. Unlike the old Church of Saren Ray, those cultists celebrate the goddess more for her warrior aspect than for her mercy. My duties included seeking out secret cults of demon and daemon worshippers and other springs of evil in the sun-swept lands of Kadira, real or imaginary. Questions, suspicions, public trials, one or two exemplary executions and fear sank its claws into the hearts of the weak and doubtful. How can a good goddess allow this? What if I'm next? Those who entertain such doubts would soon hear a knock on their door from a messenger of hell, offering a simple solution, protection or prosperity. 
in return for their soul. That's how I aided the legions of hell by working under Saren Ray's sunny banner. What was it like living disguised as Asimar? We've lived for a few years under this disguise, gaining a certain status, affluence and crowds of gullible suitors. In time I found a patron from among the followers of the cult of the Dawnflower. A man of great wealth with a personal army of mercenaries who roamed the lands of Kadira night and day, seeking out monsters and those who worshipped them. Quickly became his confidant and joined that army, all as the forefather desired. Perhaps this is why the devil agreed to give us the appearance of Asimars. Everything was going perfectly, but then Kaliki, that silly child, got herself mixed up with a band of tiefling renegades, who were too cowardly and stupid to achieve anything in life but her own wits. They organized something like a secret society and gathered in the evenings in their huts. They spoke of opening everyone's eyes and making them treat the outcasts with dignity. Sooner or later they would have done something stupid and gotten themselves caught and brought my sister down with them. So I helped them a little and put my patrons people on their track. If only I could have kept Kaliki from her foolishness. On the night of the raid for some reason I told her the truth. Thought I could explain to her that her actions were threatening her secrets. Thought she would see a reason. Nothing works out as plans. She hurried off to warn her friends and fell into the hands of the cult of the dawn floor. Her disguise was unmasked and with it my own as well. Oh sands and skies, I can't imagine the rage my noble patron felt. His Asimar confidant turned out to be a treacherous tiefling. I had no interest in learning how far he'd go in his rage and immediately set off to flee. Alas, as soon as they found out what happened, the remaining members of the cult of the demon worshippers, who I'd once helped to disperse, quickly tracked me down. They summoned a soul eater who cut my life short. My story was at its end. Tell me about how you were resurrected. You'd better ask Kaliki about that. When she learned of my death, she pleaded to Nettis, the god of unparalleled powers, and his herald agreed to return me to life, but in the state we're in now. Only one of us can be in a material plane at any time, meanwhile the other sleeps in a special demi-plane. What happened at Jamandi's mansion? You know the fun part of our story? When Nettis returned me to life, the poor hungry soul eater started following my trail again. He cannot discover me, so long as I live disguised as Kaesi, but he keeps trying. That's one reason why my sister and I never stay in one place for long. We've moved north, living here and there, till we reach Restoff. Lady Jamandi's offer was simply too tempting. Bring some pathetic bandits to heal and receive a barony in return? Of course Cassie could never be a baroness, but the adventure itself was an intriguing opportunity. Besides, I was in desperate need of distraction. So I showed up at the reception, made some valuable connections, I witnessed the attack of the unlucky assassins, but then unfortunately missed out on all the fun. The moment I ran through fire at the mansion, I was carried away to the demi-plane and Kaliki came forth to deal with the consequences. You know the rest. I'd like to know more about yeah. Of course, many do. How does it work living in terms? By the power of Nettis, my sister and I cannot meet, for as soon as one of us appears in the material plane, the other one is immediately spirited away to our demi-plane. There we sleep until it's time to switch back. The demi-plane, by the way, is full of elemental energy, which is wonderful for restoring our strength. It's a pity this ability came after we paid such a heavy price. I would have avoided my painful death and I long to see my sister again and singe her hair to show my gratitude for everything. The demi-plane nourishes us and keeps us from all kinds of trouble, but the price? It's hard to live and make plans when at any moment you can be pulled from reality, only to return after a few days or even weeks. 
I'm glad that thanks to you, we now at least have learned to control the process a little. Yeah, I like it in the stolen lands. I prefer large and bustling cities to backwaters, but on the other hand, the chance to build up a whole state from nothing is so tempting. Don't like chaos though. I've learned that at times I won't be able to play by the rules. So here is my answer. With some effort and right investments, your dominions might become something someday. Tell me about your sister. We were at our 8th summer when Kaliki, the spring of my solace, got angry at me and chucked a bunch of desert distals into my hair and I had to cut them out afterwards. It's what you have to suffer if life rewards you with a sibling. <laughs> Though I should say that very evening I burned her favorite dress. With great trouble comes great satisfaction. I want to talk to you about what it means to be a tiefling. Admit it, you like my horns, or is it the tail? <laughs> 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 uh, how are tieflings born? We are born if an ancestor laid with a powerful and evil outsider, be it a devil, a demon, or some other dark creature. Many mortals do this, believe me, either for power or pleasure. This heritage can be hidden for many generations, and it can manifest in many ways. It's difficult to find two similar tieflings. Which outsider do you and your sister descend from? From a devil. I can even guess which one. Of all the infernal beings worshipped in Kadira, the Whore Queen Mahatala is the most venerated. Secretly, of course. Servants of her court frequent these lands and they leave trails. Tell me about Kadira. Kadira is a part of the Padisha Empire of Kailash, a great thriving state. Don't think me rude, but the northern states are but a pale shadow of my homeland. Only Taldor at its height could compete with us, though it's long since lost its power. My land is wealthy, powerful and full of opportunities for anyone cunning enough to seize them. It's a pity they're all devoted to Saren Ray and the whole array of superstitions that go along with it. You know, the forefather came to talk to me. What a surprise, it's a little wonder that he came to you instead of me. He respects hierarchy, as devils should. So what did he want? He offered his help against the soul eater that's hunting you. Oh goodness, what fatherly commitment. You're right, he might be useful, but dangerous too, like any devil. But since it's my life that's at stake, the Soul Eater, no matter how I try, I'm never able to think of our last encounter as just another unpleasant episode from my past. Maybe it's because I understood perfectly well what was happening. I was completely alone, losing a fight, being killed by a monster that would eat my soul. And I would lose everything, even in afterlife. I'd like to talk to your sister. With that stiff? What? Kanara wrinkles her nose, but seems strangely saddened. Very well. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, she says her sister is a stiff. I was wondering, like, what? Is that a stiff in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me, huh, Gren? <laughs> I'm Kaliki, in case you're wondering. Let's talk about how you are now. Ask what you will. Do you worship Netus? Tell me about him. Netus is the god of magic, there are no limits to his power. He was born human, but achieved such unparalleled mastery of magic that he gained divine power. He is the embodiment of paradoxes, contradictions and making the impossible come true. I called on him at a moment of my greatest need and he, through his herald, helped me when all the kind and merciful gods fell silent. 
I'm no naive worshipper, the gods, especially him, are powerful and unpredictable. Besides, he's hardly interested in my gratitude, but I do honor those who help me. Who is your saver? The Ar Canotain. Netus is Herald and his creation. She's a living whirlwind of magical energy, an amazing and powerful creature. She often takes interest in the business of mortals and manifests Netus' will. In our case, I think she's done both. The Arcanotain wanted to intervene and help, but she also told us that Netus was aware of what happened. So strange to think that a deity turned his eye on you, if only for a moment. You like it in the Stolen Lands? Yes, I may long for my native country, but this riverland brings peace to my soul. I enjoy watching the clumsy ducklings struggling to go down the lake. And the dragonflies flying over water as it flashes with glints of sunlight. I'm glad to have seen all this, though the road that brought me here was a road of sorrow. May it be a road of joy from now on. Thank you, you have no idea how glad I am to be with someone I don't need to hide my secret from and who supports me. Mm, let me talk to you about this uh, demon. I have important news for you. The devil known as the Forefather came to me. But what did he want? He wants you and I to go to the Barons to deal with the soul eater who killed Canada. He says he's ready to help. The Soul Eater has returned. I don't know what to do, Grand Blackforge. I'm worried sick. A devil's guile knows no bounds. But if my sister is in danger, I beg you, at least try to find out what the Forefather is plotting and whether the Soul Eater really is once more at our heels. I have to go. So long, Kaliki. Good luck to you in everything you do. Okay, so I have turned on Kaliki, so if I leave now, I should be able to take her, I guess. Okay, so that story took um, a bit longer than I expected. I wasn't expecting uh, to go through all that dialogue, but uh, we are gonna go to the uh, Southern Barons in the next episode. So, come back if you want to see how that goes. As always, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, by all means, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along, and I'll see you in the next episode.